Hey, I'm Charles Hoffman from Plugin Alliance. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through all the features of the THX Spatial Creator plugin. This product allows music producers and content creators to add immersive or spatial audio effects to their mixes. Makes creating immersive audio mixes simple and accessible. You don't need to change your existing mixing workflow and it works with all major DAWs. You'll still render your mix as a stereo audio file so you can upload your spatial audio mixes to every music streaming platform. As long as listeners have a normal pair of headphones, they'll be able to hear all the 360 degree audio effects in your mix. If you're new to immersive audio, we have an entire video explaining what it is. We also have another video that goes through seven reasons why it makes sense for music producers to create binaural spatial audio mixes rather than object-based ones. Those videos will answer a lot of questions you probably have, and we've included a link to them below. You can demo THX Spatial Creator for 30 days by starting a free Mega Bundle trial. This will let you start adding elements of 3D to your songs using spatial audio as a unique effect. Or you can use it to create entirely immersive audio mixes. Before we get started, make sure that you listen to this video using a pair of headphones. THX Spatial Creator generates binaural spatial audio effects, which essentially trick your ears into hearing sounds beside, behind, below, and above you. Under the hood, it does this by manipulating the frequency response and timing of sounds, in addition to adding spatial reverb. Headphones provide a direct and isolated listening environment that allows these effects to come through most clearly. When listening with a pair of studio monitors, factors like crosstalk and the acoustics of your room will cause these spatial effects to lose definition, so you definitely need to use a pair of headphones. However, it can be any headphones that you own. Here are some examples of what this plugin can do. On the listener's end, they'll hear these immersive effects when they wear headphones and stream from music platforms. If they're listening to your music in their car or through a two-channel stereo system at home, the 3D immersion may not be as clearly defined. Think of this as creating a stereo audio mix that everyone can listen to with an added immersive audio experience for headphone listeners. All right, let's dive into THX Spatial Creator's interface. I'm gonna drop this plugin onto a track just like any other plugin. In the center of the interface, there's this 3D viewport that depicts the sound source affected by the plugin, a listener's head, and a virtual room. 
If I click and drag on the viewport, I can change the direction that I'm looking in. This viewport should feel familiar if you've worked with 3D game design or modeling software. You can move the viewport around with the zoom buttons. The plus button moves the viewport in the direction you're aiming, while the minus button moves it backward. Using the scroll wheel on your mouse while hovering over the viewport has the same effect. Another way to navigate this space involves holding the Alt or Option key while clicking and dragging. This will rotate the camera around the listener's head. You can actually escape the room and look into it from any angle you want. If you get lost or just want to quickly reset the position of the viewport, click the Zoom Reset button and you'll end up behind the listener's head. There's also a side view, front view, and top view. The viewfinder is locked when you choose one of these views, making it easy to see where sound sources have been placed within the 3D space. When you add THX Spatial Creator to a track in your DAW, it becomes a sound source that appears as a speaker icon. If you hover over the speaker, you'll notice some handles appear. Clicking and dragging on the long arrows allows you to move the sound source along the axis that the arrow aligns with. For example, I can click and drag on the blue arrow if I want to move the sound source forward and backward in the 3D space, without affecting its height or side-to-side -side placement. These arrows appear in each view. Another option is to freely move the sound source along a plane or two axes at the same time. You'll see a square at the base of where two axes meet. Clicking and dragging on the square moves the sound source along a plane. If you'd like to precisely position a sound, I recommend starting with the side view to dial in the front back positioning and the height before switching to the front view to adjust the side-to-side -side placement. I find that it's fastest to move sound sources around in the viewfinder, but there are also source parameter knobs that you can adjust. The main benefit of this is that you can automate these parameters in your DAW. With the spherical view selected, you can access the azimuth, elevation, and distance parameters. Azimuth rotates the sound source around the listener's head, keeping the height placement locked. Elevation also rotates the sound source around the listener's head, Selecting the Cartesian view provides you with X, Y, and Z axis controls. X moves the sound source from left to right, Y moves the sound source up and down, and Z moves the sound source forward and backward. Using the Distance Scalar knob, you can adjust the distance of the sound source in relation to the listener's head, and you'll see that it affects the X, Y, and Z knobs. It also affects the distance value in the spherical tab. The motion tab lets you add automatic movement to your sound source over time. When you click run, the sound source will start moving along the path of the selected preset. You can reverse the movement along the path by clicking flip. It's also possible to increase the movement speed and scale the size of the path. There are plenty of movement presets to choose from. These should cover most use cases. One thing to note is that these motion presets will lock the height of the sound source so that it aligns with the listener's ears, and the 3D, side, and front views will be disabled. This aims to make adding continuous movement a simple and streamlined process.
The acoustic parameter section allows you to modify the way in which your sound source interacts with the virtual room. You can adjust the room's width, length, and height. In the Room tab, each of these knobs controls the gain of the reflections bouncing off each surface. A room like a bathroom will have highly reflective surfaces. The main material in a bathroom is typically tile, which absorbs very little sound, so the sound will bounce around the room for a long time. In comparison, a dry studio will have less reflective surfaces. It's common for recording studios to have wood finishes and acoustic treatment that absorb sound, so you won't hear as much of a reverb tail. Each one of these knobs allows you to adjust how reflective each wall is. You can also use the room gain knob to scale the overall reflectiveness of the space. The filter tab provides an even deeper level of control over the perceived material that the surfaces in your room are made of. In real life, absorptive materials like insulation trap high frequency content and prevent it from bouncing around your room. You can simulate that by adjusting the gain of this high shelf filter. As you reduce the cutoff frequency, the filter will affect a broader frequency range. It's also worth mentioning that you don't need to dial in any of these acoustic parameters manually. You can access an assortment of room presets in the size tab that also affect the room and filter parameters. HRTF stands for Head Related Transfer Function, and this algorithm is responsible for the 360 degree immersion effect you get when listening with headphones. You can think of this as a 3D dry wet control. As you reduce the HRTF gain, sound sources will start to become less three dimensional and appear directly in front of you. The quality mode that you select has an effect on CPU usage. Standard quality generates performance-optimized room reflections. If you plan to add THX Spatial Creator to a lot of tracks and you typically run into CPU issues, this is the mode you'll want to choose. High quality mode uses real-time reflections for optimal localization and sound quality. If you use the motion feature, 
Standard quality is selected by default, and high quality is disabled. The complexity of generating reverb for a moving object in an immersive space can be quite CPU intensive, so this is how THX Spatial Creator handles that. Building on that, if you automate plugin parameters and start to hear glitches, choosing standard quality mode should fix the issue. Use standard quality whenever you add movement to your mix. Moving over to the master section, you can see your input and output levels up top. THX Spatial Creator sums every sound that you apply it to into mono before making it immersive. This ensures that the spatial effects are clearly defined. If you apply THX Spatial Creator to a mono track, the input balance slider won't affect the sound. However, when you apply it to a stereo track, the input balance slider allows you to adjust the blend between the left and right channels. To the left, you hear the left channel, to the right, you hear the right channel, and in the center, you hear a combination of the two. The master gain knob affects the output level of the plugin. You also have a treble boost and bass boost switch. Treble boost will make the sound source brighter and more vibrant, while bass boost will enhance your low end. You can use these features to rebalance the frequency response of your sound, which you might want to do depending on the room preset you've selected. THX Spatial Creator uses filters to create its 3D binaural audio effect, amongst other techniques, but this means that you probably don't want to apply an EQ plugin afterward, it can break the 3D illusion. The treble and bass boost switches are specifically designed to maintain the spatial audio effect while still allowing you to rebalance your sound. For best results, I don't recommend applying any processing to a sound after you've added THX Spatial Creator. If you decide to make a fully immersive audio mix where you've applied THX Spatial Creator to every track, you'll likely want to avoid processing your instrument buses and master track as well. The dynamics of the elements in your song are what will make it sound like the position all around the listener. You can try applying additional processing to see how it goes, but if a sound source position behind you starts to sound in front of you, Additional processing is probably the reason why. Once you've finished mixing your song, you can render it as a stereo file and upload it to streaming services. All streaming services will allow you to upload binaural stereo audio mixes made with THX Spatial Creator. The spatial effects are baked into the audio file and headphone listeners will be able to hear these effects when they stream your music. To demo THX Spatial Creator, start a free Mega Bundle trial using the link below. This will give you access to all of Plugin Alliance's products for 30 days. If this video is helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the Plugin Alliance YouTube channel for more plugin walkthroughs like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.